Well, we're seeing more and more a trend that's becoming pervasive in our industry, and that's homeowners getting their own equipment. They're buying it wholesale online. Maybe they're even getting equipment that the manufacturer tells them they can install themselves. And obviously, I'm a contractor. I know that's not good for the industry. It's ultimately not good for homeowners and customers, but that's where we are. And I don't know if there's a lot we can do about it at this point. We can try to slow it down. We can complain. Maybe there's groups out there that can lobby for a change. I don't know. I don't get involved in that kind of stuff. But I just think it's a trend that is only going to get worse. And we're going to have to figure out a way to deal with it. Now, I think we also need to think about how we got here. There's a lot of factors, but I'm going to concentrate on two factors and it has to do with us as contractors and the industry in general. As many of you know, the quality of HVAC installations and service work has not really gotten much better. Not in the last 20 something years that I've been in the business. I'm still seeing the same bad practices and bad advice out there that I was hearing when I first got started. The result is that we've got a lot of jobs that were put in poorly and people have suffered. They've suffered because of comfort problems, high energy bills, and just a poor experience with the contractor. So it boils down to contractor incompetence that has driven people to think, hey, you know, I'm not gonna get a better job done by a contractor anyway. Why would I pay thousands of dollars more when I can attempt to do it myself? I'm not gonna get a better result with a contractor. Now, obviously, we know there are good contractors and bad contractors, and we can't paint the whole industry with a wide brush, but the general consumer is starting to think that. They have very little respect for the work that contractors do in a lot of cases, and our industry has done it to itself. And the other thing that has driven people towards more do-it-yourself, I feel, is the greed of our industry. I want contractors and business owners to be successful, to be lucrative, perhaps even wealthy if it works out that way. But most owners of companies of a certain size only care about that. It is completely 100% self-interest. They're only motivated in what gets them the highest profit. They don't really care about the science. They don't care about the quality of work. They wanna charge as much as possible and have the job cost them as least as possible. They only want to do the bare minimum, but charge the absolute highest. And there's a term for that. It's called profiteering. When you take advantage of the fact that somebody is desperate to have something done, you charge them higher than the average price, uh, and you use some predatory ways of selling that work, and then you don't even deliver. I don't have a problem with somebody being the most expensive shop in town but they also need to do the best quality work in town. And very rarely do those two things go hand in hand. And so between contractor greed and contractor incompetence, our industry has driven consumers into the arms of places like HVAC Wholesale and Mr. Cool. And we only have ourselves to blame. So those are just my observations, but regardless of how we got here, we're here now. We're in the contracting space and we've got customers that are saying they want to buy their own unit. Uh, and maybe they are even saying, well, why can't I just install this myself? So what do we do about it? Well, again, we need to establish the value of having a professional contractor do the work. And so when we go out to a job and we don't offer, for example, a heat load calculation, how are we possibly differentiating ourselves from the competition. The homeowner is not going to do a heat load calculation either. Some are actually starting to. There are services out there online where a homeowner can do a basic, very broad heat load calculation when the contractor that they would hire to do the job wouldn't do anything like that. How pitiful is that? Other things that we need to do to establish the value of being a contractor is doing good quality work, standing behind what we do, and being transparent. Now, I used to say that I would not 
ever want to install equipment that was purchased by the homeowner. And even to this day, I, I think I would still be very reluctant to take something on like that. I would have to be able to do a heat load calculation and a manual S, manual J and manual S to make sure that the unit that they're asking me to install is properly sized. I would have to write my warranty and make very specific terms that protect me as a contractor. And so if you're going to get into that space and possibly have to install equipment that other people have purchased, you're, you've got to rewrite your warranties. The other thing that we would have to do is rethink our pricing models because a lot of contractors rely on a certain markup of their equipment. And when the homeowner takes that away from them, well then those contracts would be like, well, I'm not gonna make enough money to do that work. And that's true. So what do we do about it? Well, maybe we stop doing equipment markups. And instead, we develop a pricing model that is more about gross profit, which means that no matter how much the equipment or parts or materials cost, we need to be able to walk away with X amount of dollars at the end of a full day's work. And that requires us just to understand a portion of our business that maybe we didn't understand before. A lot of contractors just say, well, I mark up my equipment 20%. And I know when I do that, and I charge what I charge for labor, I'm gonna make enough money on the job. But that is really a bad way of running your business because you could have equipment and parts and materials that cost a lot of money and you get a lot of markup, or you could have equipment, parts, materials that don't cost as much and your profit depends on the cost of goods sold. If you can decouple that, where your profit no longer is tied to your cost of goods sold, then when that homeowner says, well, I already have my own equipment, you can still walk away from that job making the same amount of money as if you would have provided the equipment. So you've got to know your numbers. And what that does is it disincentivizes the homeowners from purchasing their own equipment. Maybe they haven't purchased it yet. Maybe they're pricing it. And they're not really paying wholesale prices because I've seen these prices online. And even me as a really small contractor that doesn't put that many units in a year, they're still paying more than what we're gonna pay for as a contractor for the equipment. But then when you include your installation charge that is based on gross profit per day, all of a sudden they realize they're not gonna save a whole lot of money by providing their own equipment. And they may just go back to having you provide the equipment it's a turnkey job. You can warranty it at 100%, no problems, no questions asked, you're gonna cover it. So I think what a lot of homeowners think they're doing is saving money by providing their own equipment because they think the contractor's gonna mark it up. But if we get away from that business model and we essentially resell the unit to them at the same price that we paid for them, but our turnkey job reflects a gross profit that allows us to be successful and grow and reinvest back in our business and be able to take time off and have vacations and pay your employees well and all that good stuff that it takes to run a business that comes out of that gross profit. If we do the work and still maintain that gross profit, then the total cost to the homeowner is probably going to be very similar than if we were just to provide the unit anyway. In fact, if we're paying less for the unit than they are, that job will actually cost them less if we provide it, if we adopt a gross profit margin pricing model. And so I've been doing that in my business. Let's say that I install a three ton heat pump and just using numbers, picking them out of thin air, uh, $4,000 is my equipment cost. And let's say I have another $1,000 in parts, materials, accessories, disconnect whip, thermostats, duct transitions, PVC fittings, that sort of thing. The total cost of goods sold for that job for me, let's say is $5,000. I know that that job is gonna consume, let's say two days of my life. So I've already figured out what I need to walk away after every day of work so that I can meet the goals of my business. And so if that job's gonna take me two days, I just multiply that amount by two 
and I add that to my cost of goods sold, and I know that I walk away with the same gross profit margin if I install a unit or if I, I spend all day changing out 10 contactors. I'm gonna walk away with the same amount of money. Now, another thing that I've done in my business, though, is I do put a risk factor because obviously installing a unit, there's a higher risk of having a warranty a call. Uh, you could have water that drips in the ceiling. Those things happen. You may be on the hook for that. So I do have a risk factor percentage that I add on top of high risk jobs like installations and, and things like that, that I may not put on a contactor or a capacitor job. But anyway, what I'm getting at is there are things that we can do as contractors so that we can still be successful and navigate through this world where more and more of our customers are going to want to buy their own unit and we don't have a say in the matter. We can actually drive them back towards the other direction. Now, like anything else, there's always going to be that contractor, that group of bottom feeders that are going to be willing to do the job for nothing uh, and they drive the beat up old trucks and they don't pay their people anything and they're, they never train their people and those bottom feeders are always going to steal jobs from us but guess what they're going to steal jobs that we probably wouldn't want anyway but if we can show the customer the numbers and show them that it's actually more advantageous if we go ahead and provide the equipment if we add value as contractors by doing things the right way including manual j manual s then we can remind them why it's important to have a contractor. We elevate our position as contractors, we bring honor to our trade, and we're gonna be more successful in the long run. Thanks for listening, work safe, and we'll talk to you next time.